the iconic nature of the exterior and the interior was the proportions of the outgoing vehicle. We heard over and over from our consumers that it was just right. Don't mess it up too much. So we did, we tried to keep it as close as possible while still improving the areas that needed to be improved. So the new car is lower, longer, and wider. It's up about just under an inch, 0.8 inches in overall length. That's mainly from the wheelbase. You can see here on the chart. The length is up 0.8 inches, the wheelbase is up 0.8 inches. So the vehicle got stretched a little bit. Uh, the overall width is up just slightly to keep it in proportion to everything else. And to give it that kind of uh, wheel-centric look, the, the overall height came down slightly also. And for the consumer, the big benefit here, that stretch in wheelbase went right to the front seat. So we were able to increase the overall front leg room from 40.9 to 42.9, so a little bit more interior room. Uh, also, due to packaging efficiency, we were able to get, uh, even though the car dropped by uh, a little bit, we were able to get more headroom and also shoulder room with the extra width, the couple distance between uh, the two front uh, passengers is a little bit broader. So that's the design story, that's the interior story, uh, but probably the biggest opportunity in addition to the materials was the dynamic portion. And here we knew we had a lot of work to do because the outgoing car was frankly needed some room for improvement. So we started with the very basics which was the body and white. And here, uh, not only in addition to the changing safety standards, we had to do a lot of work to increase the overall rigidity of that body and white. And this basically is because it's the foundation of everything that attaches to the car when you're driving. The, the powertrain is uh, contained in here, the suspension, everything. So we had to get it right. So we used uh, a very expensive material we call ultra high strength tensile steel. It's shown here in the, uh, this light fuchsia color. Uh, it's up about 35%, uh, about just over a third of the material inside the car. It's a very expensive, very uh, uh, strong material. Not only is the level of material increased, but more specifically, a lot of attention was paid on how the car comes together, where you can see all the components come together, the roof frame, the side frame, all the gusseting. A lot of work was done into making sure that these joints were really, really tough, really rigid, and kept that vehicle in a very, very uh, complex form. And I think this speaks to um, some of the sophistication that uh, Kia has developed over the last few generations, that each successive model, you can feel there's improvements in sophistication refinement and a lot of it is because of this ability on the engineering side to pay more attention to the small details inside the body itself and you'll feel it today a lot of people feel it they drive a the vehicle for the first time they're like wow this is amazing how did you do this this is one of the ingredients is really starting with the basics of the body making sure it's a, a, a tough rigid uh, platform to uh, work with the second area because the body is now rigid we were able to do a lot more work with the suspension uh, we're carrying over a similar design, but it's all new parts uh, from the old vehicle. It's a McPherson front, uh, front strut and also a coupled torsion beam rear axle. So very similar to the outgoing car. But more importantly, this is the uh, third iteration of our K-platform uh, small vehicle uh, architecture. And this is important because this is the third time we've been at this with the, it's underneath the Rio, also underneath the Forte, and now underneath the Soul. Each generation we're able to improve it a little bit. So a lot of work was gone into the, the, the subtleties of making sure that all of the suspension components work well together. For instance, the, uh, the, the steering box is now one piece. It's been moved further forward, and at the same time, the uh, stabilizer, stabilizer bars been pulled further back. And what this does is stability during high speed maneuvers and breaking in corners, all that stuff that you're not supposed to do. When you do it, it's, it's a very stable, uh, dynamic car. Also, we added a new subframe that's attached with four different points. And what this does is uh, separates those road inputs from going into the body. So, again, when you hit a bump, you don't hear that crashing hard sound. It's very smooth and controlled and refined. Also, for the rear suspension, uh, the shock absorber geometry now is completely vertical. It's, it, as you see here in the corner, the numbers are, we went from 26 to 12, so it's just about right off of dead center. What this does is allows the uh, suspension to have full travel and have the shock absorber have full effectiveness over the entire travel of that suspension. 
So the feeling from the rear is before we hit a, a, hit a pothole or something uh, 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 rough surface, you, you feel it in the vehicle, you feel it dancing around, all that's been fixed on this current generation. Mm -hmm. Also, the, uh, the bushings or the durometers were increased in the rear from about 70 millimeters to 76, so there's a lot more surface area to, to absorb those impacts. So overall, the impact was a, a, a much, much greater experience overall. So the third component, so there's a, a, a new, uh, tougher body, stronger body, a new suspension that's been more nuanced. The third part of the equation is uh, a whisper quiet interior. And again, a lot of work went into, from the engineering side, to understand where the sound pads were coming into the vehicle. How is the noise traveling from the road and from the outside into the vehicle? And the engineers spent a lot of time figuring out where these places are and stopping those, those uh, sound pads. Um, they used, uh, in addition to the subframe, which I've already mentioned, the front of dash lower mat is an increased density. It's much, much thicker. Also padding underneath the car, underneath the carpet, and also paying a lot of attention to specifically how the sound comes in from the road surfaces into the vehicle and stopping it where it starts. Also, a new, uh, new technology for us, it's, uh, engineers call it radical body sealing, but it's basically expandable foam. They put the foam inside the vehicle, as it travels through the ovens, it bakes, expands, and blocks the sound pass. And that's mainly applied in the sill area. Uh, the A, B, and C pillars, all those areas are filled with this foam. So when you drive the vehicle today, you'll hear how quiet it is. It's uh, a significant improvement over the automobile vehicle. 